Hey there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. In today's video, we're gonna meet a family of four that have chosen to live full time inside of their Jeep. And while that may not sound like a very glamorous lifestyle, trust me, by the end of this video, you're gonna think that this is the ultimate camping setup. Well Thought Out doesn't even begin to explain this DIY overlanding glamper. They have everything from a kitchen, bathroom, and bedroom all packed neatly into a vehicle trailer combo that has the ability to go anywhere. I'm pretty sure this full-time nomadic family has it all figured out. But before we dive right in and take a tour, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new video. Hi, we're Stringless Theory. And we're excited to show you our mobile tree house. We started out going on weekends to national forests, state parks, where we could do dispersed camping. And that was kind of our evolution, was a lot of short camping trips. Once we had kids, we saw how much they loved the freedom of being in the outdoors. So we started thinking about how can we do that more and more. In places where we had cell phone service, I would work online from the campsite, and those turned from weekend trips to week-long trips to month-long trips. And we realized we were happier in our Jeep on the road than we were in the house. Stepping into a nomadic lifestyle where we can go anywhere at any time, it just felt very natural for us. We spent about four months rebuilding the Jeep. The Jeep was about $30,000. We added another $15,000 to turn it into an RV. The trailer, all in, built, was about $8,000. It was a DIY project. We built everything we could ourselves, and we had an awesome time building it. I had this dream always of going on a major vehicle-based expedition. We discovered the Transamerica Trail. It outlines a network of dirt roads that goes coast to coast through the deep parts of the National Forest. It's an adventure, and sometimes it's scary. You, know, you get stranded someplace, and you have to figure out how to get out on your own. That's part of the adventure. That's part of the learning experience. We make sure that the kids are part of that. They help mm -hmm. us fix the Jeep with supervision, and they're really proud of it. The things that they learn, so much of it is problem solving and being out of their comfort zone. As a parent, it's a little scary. You don't ever want your child to be cold or hungry or tired. When all of a sudden you find yourself in those situations, you realize that you have the ability to problem solve through it, and you actually feel gratified that you were able to come out of it. I remember and realize the growth in that is occurring because we are faced with our triggers and our challenges. We are meeting those triggers head on. And the kids have really increased their confidence in themselves and just felt accomplished in the things that they've made it through. Welcome to our home. This is Spirit and our trailer's opportunity. We name these after the Mars rovers that inspired the world with their ability to explore and discover over very long periods of time. Total length in our build is about 25 feet. The Jeep is about 6,500 pounds and the trailer is 1,500 pounds. And we run 35 inch tires on the Jeep. This gives us an ability to be light and agile and get to places that most full-time rigs can't get to and we love it. One of our major goals was to have a lot of storage and be very well organized. And we found Patriot Fastbacks. They make these hard tops that are five and a half inches taller than a normal Jeep top. Once we had the hard top on there, we knew we needed storage on the top for solar panels, transit case. Right now we're standing on a front runner roof rack. And we have here the max tracks and two solar panels, which are 100 watts each a Starlink terminal, which stores inside this box. Those roads and trails are rough. And two things that we do to make it comfortable are we air down and we pull off our sway bar linkages. To do that, we installed an ARB dual uh, compressor here. This is a high output compressor and we have air hose that we run around and we can air up 
all six tires, trailer and vehicle from this air compressor, and we use a tire deflator to go down. If you're on a lot of gravel roads that are really washboarded, you can make those roads a lot smoother by disconnecting your sway bars. The sway bars, they just make the washboard roads buttery smooth. We have the 3.6 liter engine. On the pavement, we get about 14 miles per gallon. On trail, we're getting about 10 and a half miles per gallon. One of our other goals was to have situational awareness around the vehicle all the time. We installed cameras around the corners. We have one on each fender, we have one on the front, and one in the back. And those feed into our screen in the center of the Jeep. This is an aftermarket head unit, and we really love it. It has a lot of capabilities, and the biggest thing is maps. We run Gaia Maps. We use it every single day. We don't really use turn-by-turn -turn navigation. And it's been a great learning experience for the kids because they sit in the back seat. They can both see this clearly. And as we're figuring out where we're going to go, when we get lost, they're right there with us figuring out where we're going to go next. And that's super fun to do as a family. This is also our TV. And we plugged a Google Chromecast smart TV into this. We also use it for video conferencing. There's a web camera here. We talk to our families. The camera can see all four of us. And the sound comes out the speakers. So it's a really convenient way to reconnect with family when we're traveling for long periods of time. And all of this works over our Starlink terminal. So we pull into a wild campsite someplace. We throw up Starlink. And we're immediately online, able to communicate with people. It's been really convenient for us to travel in remote areas and still stay in touch. One of the most unique things about our build is how we're using all this extra headspace that this hardtop gives us. We worked with a fab shop in North Carolina. They helped us build these steel panels that allows you to attach pouches, bags, whatever to. And the entire inside of this Jeep roof is covered in it. And we have pouches hanging everywhere. And they have zippers. And they're like shelves. You can just unzip and grab out the thing that you need. It's been really convenient. I keep all of my foul weather gear above my head, so if it's raining, I can just pop it on without getting out. Uh, we have all sorts of things hanging up there that we can just unclip and grab when we need it. We have around 50 pouches in our Jeep right now. There's a bag up here right now which has a small first aid kit in it. It's pretty easy just to pull down. And it's like that everywhere. The bags don't fall down, but the contents do. Sometimes you'll be opening a thing here and bouncing down the road and you'll get a face full of stuff. That's just the nature of it, and it's totally worth it to have the organization. This is where Oliver and Freddie spend a lot of time. The back of each seat has their blanket here in the top. They have their own backpacks that unclip that they can take with them. Fishing rods, monoculars, all of their personal stuff, they can organize in their bags however they want. But this is a great kit for them to just go off and have adventures. We have a little center console here with things that they keep in there, some hats and gloves, and Legos are usually in there too. Legos are usually everywhere back here, to be honest. <laughs> in the back of the cabin, we have mounted all of our first aid gear. Typical first aid is stabilize a patient and wait for first responders. And because of the places that we go, we had to have a more comprehensive approach to first aid. We took some online training, and we have a bleed kit, we have a CPR kit, we have an EpiPen, a defibrillator. These are all the urgent medical issue type things where they're on Velcro, you grab them, you run to stabilize somebody. And then back in the trailer, we have a more comprehensive medical kit to sustain us long duration as we explore our remote areas. Let's go to the back of the rig and see what we have going on there. We designed a shelf, we prototyped it out of cardboard, took it to the fab shop, and they made it out of aluminum and powder coated it and did a really awesome job. This holds all of our clothing up here. We have these bags hanging from the bottom of this shelf here, and this acts as kind of a, almost a drawer you can reach your hand in, and this has books in it for the kids. And then moving down, we get into the kitchen area. Our refrigerator is on a slide here and opens from the top, and I kept hitting my head on the fridge, going in here and dropping it, so I put a clip on the window that holds it open. We have a water system on the left here, and a power system on the right. The water system is based on a one and a half gallon per minute water pump. There's a five gallon water tank in the bumper, and we have 21 gallons in the trailer. There's an ultraviolet water filter, and what that allows us to do is to pump water out of streams, pump it through the filter, and fill all of our tanks. We, in total, carry about 30 gallons of water at a time. 
and that 30 gallons of water will last the four of us about a week. We designed our power system around a Goal Zero Yeti 500X. It is a 500 watt hour lithium ion battery with a built-in solar charge controller and 300 watt inverter. We hard mounted that to the top of this cabinet in the back here. And we can see how many watts we're generating from solar, how many watts we're using, what the percentage of the battery is. We power our cell phone booster, our Starlink terminal, our water pump, the water filtration system, the refrigerator, and our lighting all off that battery. We can also charge the battery off of the engine. So when we're driving, we can choose to use the alternator to charge this battery. And it charges in about four hours. Our kitchen exists between the Jeep and the trailer. This is on a drawer system that pulls out, and we have a prep surface, a stove, and on the trailer side, we have the tongue box, which provides another surface for us to work on. And then our dining room table and our chairs that live under this wonderful awning. We have protection from the sun, from the rain, and we live outside full time, and we love it. Just like a traditional kitchen, this portion of our rig is the heart. Prior to being on this journey, we loved cooking meals together in a kitchen, and it's no different here. What I love about this setup is that everything flows really well. We've given a lot of thought to where everything is positioned so that we don't need to reach too far or dig too deep for anything that we're looking for when we're cooking. This is a Coleman two burner dual fuel stove. It can run on propane or gasoline. We choose to use gasoline because it simplifies fueling up. We only have to worry about one type of fuel. This is where we keep everything that we need to quickly access while we're cooking. We did include a power strip here for our 110 power for when we want to power small appliances. We wanted to have a lot of the same capabilities that we had in a traditional home kitchen. For us, that meant a large work surface. Our countertop surface is food grade stainless steel. Food and kids is challenging no matter what your situation. One thing that's been super helpful for us traveling is bringing the kids into the grocery store with us and letting them be involved. They feel like they had a choice in what we're preparing and their palates have expanded so much on this trip. Opportunity is a 1966 M416 military trailer. We bought this on Craigslist. We started off with a spring over axle lift on it to give us more ground clearance. We lengthened the tongue and we welded a hitch receiver onto the back to hold our spare tire on a spare tire carrier. We built a water system into Opportunity around a 21 gallon RV water tank. And then we have a hose that we can use just to spray you know, the kids off if they are sandy or muddy, which happens all the time, uh, or we transfer water forward into Spirit. To organize all of our equipment, we standardized around these South African ammo cases, and everything is secured with logistics rail to the tub of the trailer. You can lift them out, they're like Legos, and our top three here are food supplies. We open the lids off of them and reach in and get our, our food out, our dried foods. We also have a microscope, music equipment, a whole one of these dedicated to Legos, and then bathroom supplies. The tent is on a platform that raises and lowers with electrical linear actuators. These are actuators from Progressive Automations. They're waterproof and each one can lift around 400 pounds. When we park, we open up the tongue box, flip the switches, and this raises all the way up to as high as nine feet. Welcome to the tent. One thing you want to know about this is the lights, these something that's connected with batteries. One thing I like about the tent is uh, these holes in the tent. If you're wondering what they are, is they are skylights. Now how they work is you just lay down right here, this is my spot, and look at the stars. Now if you can, op you can open these, and if you open it, then you can look at, Die. These are bars here. That's what's holding up the tent because if these bars disappear, then this tent would fall down because these bars are holding it up. 
We built our bathroom into the passenger side of the trailer. We have a shower tent here, which opens up and gives you a booth that you can get inside. And then for the actual shower, we built our own out of a pesticide sprayer. We take the pump off and we put it on our stove. We heat the water up. And then this uh, valve here, you squeeze it for water, you let go, it turns off, so you can kind of you know, wet down and then you can lock it on and soak. It's two and a half gallons, it gets really hot, and that's plenty of water for an adult. And we can wash both of the kids uh, in one of these. When we're camping, when we're not staying on a KOA or a state park and don't have access to bathrooms, this is what we use. What we love about it is that it's very compact. So there are two ways that you can use the seat. You can either use it with a cat hole in accordance with leave no trace principles. The other way, and sometimes we need to do this depending on the environment we're in, we carry out. I don't have plans anymore, I have goals. That's so freeing, we've really embraced that. Being stringless is not about just floating with no attachments to anything, it's just about reconnecting intentionally. We are open to the possibilities that life brings us. We feel like an explorer going on a major expedition mm -hmm. to go the whole way from Virginia to the coast of Oregon is a big deal for us. Thanks for watching this week's video. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you soon with another unique home tour.